All right, get ready, because today we're diving into the fascinating world of dolphins. But uh, this isn't your typical feel-good dolphin chat. We're going deep. The busting myths and uncovering some hard truths about these creatures. And trust me, this deep dive might change how you see those dolphin smiles forever. Our guide for this deep dive is Lori Marino and her work, Dolphin Assisted Therapy, from ancient myth to modern snake oil. So let's be real. Who doesn't love dolphins, right? They're intelligent, social, and those playful leaps, instant mood booster. But here's the thing. Our perception of dolphins is tangled up in centuries-old myths and some, well, let's just say misleading modern marketing. Take that iconic dolphin smile, for example. It's literally just their jaw structure. They're not actually grinning ear to ear like we might think. But that hasn't stopped humans from projecting all sorts of emotions onto them. And those projections, well, they've had some real-world consequences, mm. <laughs> especially when it comes to dolphin-assisted therapy, or DAT, as it's called. Before we get into all that, let's rewind a bit. We're talking ancient myths here. Did you know the ancient Greeks practically considered dolphins demigods of the sea? Absolutely. They were seen as messengers of the gods, rescuers of shipwrecked sailors, even credited with mystical powers. One ancient poet, Oppian of Cilicia, wrote that dolphins were diviner than anything yet created. Diviner than anything yet created. Wow, talk about a reputation to live up to. And it's not just ancient Greece. Throughout history and across cultures, dolphins pop up as heroes in myths and legends. You've got the Greek myth of Taras, saved from drowning by a dolphin sent by Poseidon. And even today, you hear stories like Jojo the dolphin in the Turks and Caicos Islands, who supposedly protects swimmers from sharks. It's really interesting how these ancient stories are still shaping our perceptions today. It's yeah. like we've collectively created this image of the noble, selfless dolphin, always there to help humans in need. So what you're saying is... Our love affair with dolphins goes way back, and we've kind of put them on this pedestal. But where does dad fit into all of this? Well, think about it. Dad is built on the idea that dolphins have this innate healing power, that simply interacting with them can help with all sorts of conditions, especially autism, and that belief. It's deeply rooted in this long history of seeing dolphins as spiritually superior beings almost like underwater therapists with a mystical connection to human emotions. Okay, so we've got this mix of ancient myths and modern day hopes fueling this whole dat industry, but what does the science actually say about these supposed benefits? Is there any actual evidence to back up these claims? That's where things get really interesting and honestly, a bit disheartening. Because despite what proponents might tell you, the scientific reality is, well, there's no solid evidence that dat actually works. Hold on, none. But what about all those feel-good stories you hear? The parents who say their child made incredible progress after swimming with dolphins. I understand where you're coming from. Those testimonials can be compelling, I get it. But they don't hold up to scientific scrutiny. See, human memory is incredibly unreliable. And when you desperately want to believe something works, you're more likely to see what you want to see, even if it's not really there. That's why we need rigorous scientific studies with proper controls. Okay, so walk me through this. How do researchers actually study dad? How do they figure out if it's legit or not? Well, for one, you need a control group. So that's a group of people with similar conditions who don't receive the therapy. The dat in this case. Yeah. That way you can compare them to the group that actually undergoes dat. And you know what? The few studies that actually included a control group, they didn't show any real long-term benefits. So let me get this straight. These places are charging oh, yeah. thousands of dollars for right. something that might just be a placebo. At best. And potentially harmful at worst. Exactly. Marino actually compares dat to snake oil. Wow. Which, it's a fitting analogy when <laughs> you think about it. This industry profits from the desperation of families. Families are just looking for a cure, for any glimmer of hope, really. Yeah. And it makes promises that science just can't back up. Honestly, that's heartbreaking. You'd think if there was even a chance it could help, the benefits would outweigh any potential downsides. But you're saying there are more downsides. Yeah, unfortunately there are. And these downsides go beyond just the financial burden on families. Right. We also have to think about the potential risks to the humans involved. Right. I mean, we're talking about wild animals here. As much as we like to romanticize dolphins, they're powerful creatures with instincts. Yeah. And things can go wrong. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, we've all seen those videos of dolphins leaping out of the water, barely missing boats. Those tales are no joke. Exactly. And there have been cases of people getting bitten, yeah. scratched up, even knocked unconscious by dolphins during these interactions. Right. And let's not forget about the risk of zoonotic diseases. Oh, right. Illnesses that can be transmitted from animals to humans. It's easy to get caught up in the cuteness and forget there's a wild side to them. 
But what about the dolphins and all of this? You mentioned stress earlier. What are the long-term effects on dolphins kept in captivity for DAT and other entertainment? Well, this is where things take a dark turn. Remember that ancient Roman poet who called them diviner than anything <laughs> yeah. these days? They're often treated like commodities, ripped from their ocean homes, separated from their families, and confined to artificial enclosures. It's got to be incredibly stressful for them to be confined like that, especially with how intelligent and social these creatures are. They can travel up to 100 miles a day in the wild. Exactly. And that stress, it has serious consequences. The average lifespan of a bottlenose dolphin in the wild is 45 to 50 years. In captivity, that number plummets. We're talking chronic stress, ulcers, even something called psychogenic shock. Basically, they die from a broken heart. Oh, wow. The close confinement, the forced interaction with humans, the constant noise in these facilities, it takes a huge toll on them. It's like they're living in a completely different world and, and there's no escaping it. And here's something really unsettling. Some captive dolphins are even prescribed antacids, like Melanta. Antacids for dolphins. And for dolphins, why would a dolphin need an antacid? Ulcers. Ulcers. They're developing ulcers from stress. That's awful. It really makes you question the living conditions they're subjected to. It goes beyond just the suffering of these individual dolphins, right? Yeah. Capturing them for dat and entertainment. Oh, absolutely. That's got to have ripple effects. On wild populations, I mean... Absolutely. Yeah. Every dolphin taken from the wild disrupts a complex social structure. These animals, they communicate, they cooperate, they even have cultural traditions. Dolphin culture. You got it. There are dolphin communities huh? that have learned to use sponges as tools to help them find food. This knowledge is passed down through generations. And when you take even one dolphin away, it disrupts that whole process, like losing a piece of their history. It's like we're stealing their future at the same time that we're taking them from their homes. And then there's the issue of drive hunts. Those are the really awful events, like in Taiji, Japan, yeah. where they drive dolphins into those coves. It's a brutal practice. They herd these intelligent social creatures into these shallow coves. And then it's just this chaotic scene. Nets closing in, the water's thrashing, dolphins are panicking. Some are killed for their meat and others. The ones who are spared, I guess you could say. They're selected for captivity. Many end up in those deep facilities or marine parks. It's just, ugh. It's hard to even think about. Knowing that some of these animals end up in places that are marketed as therapeutic or educational. It's pretty ironic. Our desire to be close to dolphins. Yeah. To connect with them. Mm. It's fueled an industry that causes so much suffering. We tell ourselves we're helping them. That we're honoring them by keeping them in these tanks. Yeah. By making them interact with us on our terms. But the reality is, mm. it's just not right. This deep dive has been a real eye-opener. I knew there were problems with keeping dolphins in captivity and all, but I never really connected it to debt or to those ancient myths we talked about or to the huge impact on wild dolphin populations. It really makes you think about our relationship with these animals in a whole new way. I think you've hit on something really important. We tend to separate our feelings for animals from how our actions actually affect them. We love the idea of dolphins. But we don't always consider the well-being of actual dolphins. So what can we do about it? If debt isn't the answer, what is? How do we go from exploiting dolphins to truly respecting them and protecting them? It starts with awareness. We have to acknowledge the harm we've caused. And then we need to take responsibility, support groups that are working to protect dolphins, groups that are trying to stop dolphins from being captured and kept in captivity, and learn more about the realities of captivity. Educate yourself educate others, mm -hmm. and emphasize how important it is to preserve their natural habitats. So instead of trying to bring dolphins into our world, maybe it's time we try to meet them in theirs. Exactly. There's so much beauty and wonder in seeing dolphins in their natural environment, in the ocean where they belong. We can appreciate them from a distance, knowing that we're not contributing to their suffering, that we're actually helping them by supporting ethical ecotourism and conservation efforts. Well, this has been an incredible deep dive. I feel like I've learned so much about these amazing creatures and the challenges they face because of us. Thank you so much for guiding us through all of this. It's been my pleasure. And remember, knowledge is power. The more we know, the better choices we can make. Choices that are good for us and good for the natural world. I love that. Knowledge is power. And for our listeners, here's something to think about. If dolphins could talk, what would they say about us? What would they say about how fascinated we are by them? Let that question stay with you as you continue to learn about these amazing animals. That's it for today's deep dive. Until next time, keep asking questions, keep learning, and keep diving deep.